I help develop a baby registry platform that allows expecting parents to create and share a wishlist of baby products they want. Friends and family can contribute to or purchase items directly from the list, helping the parents prepare for the arrival of their baby. The platform supports multi-store listings, price tracking and personalized recommendations. To provide brands with actionable insights, I'm building a dedicated data platform focused on time series analytics. Brands will be able to track how key metrics like monthly purchase trends, wishlist frequency and competitive comparisons evolve over time, helping them monitor their brand performance. In this video, I wanted to take a quick look at how we achieve these type of time series analytics using Postgres and Timescale DB. Before we dive in, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Our application is based on Laravel and our main database is powered by MySQL. On a high level, our database looks a little something like this. On our platform, a user can have many wish lists, and on a wish list, we can have many wishes. A wish may or may not be linked to a product, and a product is always linked to a category. We have millions of rows in the wishes table, and even though our database is pretty well optimized, querying this data for displaying in the time series chart is challenging to say the least. The fact that we need to join multiple tables or do subqueries is also not ideal, so we decided to create a separate database that has a flatter structure and is based on Postgres and Timescale DB. Timescale DB is a plugin for Postgres that allows us to achieve a very high level of query performance with minimal effort. Timescale DB has this concept called hypertables a type of table that automatically partitions your time series data. And the cool thing is that you can interact with these hyper tables the same way you would with regular Postgres tables. Let's see how this fits in our architecture. We have our main application on the left with the main MySQL database, and we set up a secondary connection to our Postgres database on which we installed Timescale DB. On the right, we have our second Laravel instance for the analytics platform. This is also powered by its own MySQL database for managing users, subscriptions, etc. And this instance also has a secondary connection to the same Postgres database for querying purposes. The main platform fills up the Postgres database nightly and the analytics platform is able to read from it. The Postgres database is very simple and contains a single flattened table. So querying it is already much simpler. In our Postgres database, we have a table called wish events, in which we have a created at timestamp, we have a product ID, we have a product name, we have a brand ID, a brand name, a category ID, and a category name. Do note that the product ID, brand ID, and category ID are not foreign keys and simply allow us to query them from our main database. This way, we can keep things lean and mean and we don't have to copy things over. To make things easier to understand, I created an example, which I'll link in the description below. The example uses the new Laravel View starter kit and displays a graph showcasing the amount of revenue of the selected period and the amount of rows Timescale DB had to filter through. Let's take a look at some code. Let's take a look at the migrations first. We create our orders table that has a timestamp with time zone called time and we have a column for the price. Nothing special here. Now, the next line is where we instruct Timescale DB to create a hyper table. We say select create hyper table. Then we say the table, which is orders, and our time column, which is time. This will instruct Timescale DB to partition the table by date and time. And that's all we have to do. I included a dummy CSV file in the storage directory, which you can import using table plus. Now, the first thing I like to do when dealing with time series data is to split the queries up in their own files. This makes it very easy to do changes and even test them out in table plus. So under resources, Queries, you can find the two queries I included in this example. We have our main revenue per period query, and then we have our rows per period query. If we open up web.php and take a look at some logic, we can see I first created a helper called query, which will execute the file I give in this example, revenue per period, and I can pass some dynamic parameters in here. When I call execute, the first thing I do is get the query from the resource path, then I calculate a cache key, then I say cache remember with the cache key and I will finally execute the query using db select. The revenue per period query is where the magic happens. So let's take a look. The query is actually pretty simple. We say select time bucket, which is timescale db specific. Then we have our dynamic parameter bucket, 
which we can pass from our code. So bucket is one month in this case. Then we need our time column and we select this as a period and we want to calculate the revenue. So we say some price and that's the revenue. We select this from our orders table and which orders do we want to include? The orders where the time is bigger than or equal to from and the time is lesser than two. And again, we can pass this from our code. In our code, we defined a range 2020 to 2024 and we pass in from range zero, which is 2020, start of the year. And then we say range one, which is 2024, end of year. So we take every order from the start of 2020 to the end of 2024. We will group this by the period and we will order this by the period as well. If you take a look at the result we get, let's dump and die. If you take a look at the result, we have a period which is January 2020 and then we have our revenue for that month because remember our bucket is one month. The next one will be February, the next one will be March, etc, etc. Then we will clean up our data a bit. We, will, we need the month, the year and the revenue. If we dump and die, so we get January 2020 and this was our revenue. Next up, we'll group by month because we need January 2020, January 2021, etc. And in here, we'll map our data for displaying in the front end. And the data looks a little something like this. We get January and when we open the collection, we'll see the name is Jen. 2020 this revenue, 2021 this revenue, 2022 this revenue, etc, etc. Next up, we execute the rows per period. If we take a look at the query, we'll say select count time from orders where time is bigger than or equal from and time is lesser than two. And we pass in the same parameters here. And finally, we render our view. We pass in our data, the total number of rows. And the categories are a bit special because we need the entire range of 2020 to 2024. We can use range from equals range zero to range one. And we will map this into an array of strings. Then we can jump to our view, which simply renders a bar chart from ShadCN. So we have our bar chart. We pass in the data. The index is the name, which will be the name of the month. We pass in some nice colors. And our categories is the range from 2020 to 2024. And when you hover over July, for example, you'll see the revenue from 2020 to 2024 being displayed in a nice chart. And the cool thing when working with these dynamic parameters is that you can say like maybe you want the range to be 2022 to 2023. And when we refresh, you'll get the result from 2022 to 2023. And that's it. This simple example already shows off the powerful features of creating charts using Timescale DB and you can check it out yourself on my GitHub link below. That also concludes this video. I hope you learned something, and if you did, give me a like and consider subscribing. And before I go, I quickly wanted to mention I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting services, so you can book a slot in my calendar for pair programming or discussing the architectural design of your project. Maybe you have questions regarding multi-tenancy or you need help debugging something in particular. You can find everything in the description below. And with that, I hope to see you in the next video.